Colonial India is the part of the Indian subcontinent which was under the control of European colonial powers through trade and conquest. The first European power to arrive in India was the Macedonian army of Alexander the Great in 327-326 BC. The satraps he established in the northwest of the subcontinent quickly crumbled after he left. Later, trade was carried between Indian states and the Roman Empire by Roman sailors who reached India via the Red Sea and Arabian Sea, but the Romans never saw trading settlements or territory in India. The spice trade between India and Europe was one of the main types of trade in the world economy and was the main catalyst for the period of European exploration. The search for the wealth and prosperity of India led to the accidental discovery of the Americas by Christopher Columbus in 1492. Only a few years later, near the end of the 15th century, Portuguese sailor Vasco da Gama became the first European to re-establish direct trade links with India since Roman times by being the first to arrive by circumnavigating Africa, 1497-1499. Having arrived in Calicut, which by then was one of the major trading ports of the Eastern world, he obtained permission to trade in the city from Samudari Raja. Trading rivalries among the seafaring European powers brought other European powers to India. The Dutch Republic, England, France, and Denmark all established trading posts in India in the early 17th century. As the Mughal Empire disintegrated in the early 18th century, and then as the Maratha Empire became weakened after the Third Battle of Panipat, many relatively weak and unstable Indian states which emerged were increasingly open to manipulation by the Europeans, through dependent Indian rulers. In the later 18th century Great Britain and France struggled for dominance, partly through proxy Indian rulers but also by direct military intervention. The defeat of the redoubtable Indian ruler Tipu Sultan in 1799 marginalised the French influence. This was followed by a rapid expansion of British power through the greater part of the Indian subcontinent in the early 19th century. By the middle of the century the British had already gained direct or indirect control over almost all of India. British India consisting of the directly ruled British presidencies and provinces, contained the most populous and valuable parts of the British Empire and thus became known as the jewel in the British crown. Long after the decline of the Roman Empire's seaborne trade with India, the Portuguese were the next Europeans to sail there for the purpose of trade, first arriving by ship in May 1498. The closing of the traditional trade routes in Western Asia by the Ottoman Empire, and rivalry with the Italian states, sent Portugal in search of an alternate sea route to India. The first successful voyage to India was by Vasco da Gama in 1498, when after sailing around the Cape of Good Hope he arrived in Calicut, now in Kerala. Having arrived there, he obtained from Samudari Raja permission to trade in the city. The navigator was received with traditional hospitality, but an interview with the Samudari, Zamarin, failed to produce any definitive results. Vasco da Gama requested permission to leave a factor behind in charge of the merchandise he could not sell, his request was refused, and the king insisted that Gama should pay customs duty like any other trader, which strained their relations. The colonial era in India began in 1502, when the Portuguese Empire established the first European trading center at Kalam, Kerala. In 1505 the King of Portugal appointed D.O.M. Francisco de Almeida as the first Portuguese viceroy in India, followed in 1509 by D.O.M. Afonso de Albuquerque. In 1510 Albuquerque conquered the city of Goa, which had been controlled by Muslims. He inaugurated the policy of marrying Portuguese soldiers and sailors with local Indian girls, the consequence of which was a great miscegenation in Goa and other Portuguese territories in Asia. Another feature of the Portuguese presence in India was their will to evangelize and promote Catholicism. In this, the Jesuits played a fundamental role, and to this day the Jesuit missionary Saint Francis Xavier is revered among the Catholics of India. The Portuguese established a chain of outposts along India's west coast and on the island of Ceylon in the early 16th century. They built the St. Angelo Fort at Kenner to guard their possessions in North Malabar. 
Goa was their prized possession and the seat of Portugal's viceroy. Portugal's northern province included settlements at Daman, Diu, Chal, Bakhaim, Sals et, and Mumbai. The rest of the northern province, with the exception of Daman and Diu, was lost to the Maratha Empire in the early 18th century. From 1580 to 1640 the Portuguese Empire fell under the Spanish Empire. In 1661 Portugal was at war with Spain and needed support from England. This led to the marriage of Princess Catherine of Portugal to Charles II of England, who imposed a dowry that included the insular and less inhabited areas of southern Bombay while the Portuguese managed to retain all the mainland territory north of Bandra up to Thana and Basin. This was the beginning of the English presence in India. The Dutch East India Company established trading posts on different parts along the Indian coast. For some while, they controlled the Malabar southwest coast, Kadungalar, Palipuram, Cochin, Cochin de Bakso slash Santa Cruz, Quilan, Coilan, Kananoar, Kundapura, Kayamkulam, Panani, and the Coromandel southeastern coast, Golconda, Bhimunapatnam, Kakinata, Palakal, Pulakat, Parnjipetai, Nigapatnam, and Surat, 1616-1795. They conquered Ceylon from the Portuguese. The Dutch also established trading stations in Travancore and coastal Tamil Nadu as well as at Rajshahi in present-day Bangladesh, Pipley, Hugli Chinchara, and Murshidabad in present-day West Bengal, Balasur, Baleshwar or Balasoar, in Odisha, and Ava, Arakan, and Syriam in present-day Myanmar, Burma. Ceylon was lost at the Congress of Vienna in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars, where the Dutch having fallen subject to France, saw their colonies raided by Britain. The Dutch later became less involved in India, as they had the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, as their prized possession. At the end of the 16th century, England and the United Netherlands began to challenge Portugal's monopoly of trade with Asia, forming private joint stock companies to finance the voyages the English, later British, East India Company, and the Dutch East India Company, which were chartered in 1600 and 1602 respectively. These companies were intended to carry on the lucrative spice trade, and they focused their efforts on the areas of production, the Indonesian archipelago and especially the Spice Islands, and on India as an important market for the trade. The close proximity of London and Amsterdam across the North Sea, and the intense rivalry between England and the Netherlands, inevitably led to conflict between the two companies, with the Dutch gaining the upper hand in the Moluccas, previously a Portuguese stronghold, after the withdrawal of the English in 1622, but with the English enjoying more success in India, at Surat, after the establishment of a factory in 1613. The Netherlands' more advanced financial system and the three Anglo-Dutch wars of the 17th century left the Dutch as the dominant naval and trading power in Asia. Hostilities ceased after the Glorious Revolution of 1688, when the Dutch Prince William of Orange ascended the English throne, bringing peace between the Netherlands and England. A deal between the two nations left the more valuable spice trade of the Indonesian archipelago to the Netherlands and the textiles industry of India to England, but textiles overtook spices in terms of profitability, so that by 1720, in terms of sales, the English company had overtaken the Dutch. The English East India Company shifted its focus from Surata hub of the spice trade network to Fort St. George. East India Company. In 1757 Mir Jafur, the commander-in-chief of the army of the Nawab of Bengal, along with Jagat Seth, Maharaja Krishnanath, Umi Chand, and some others, secretly connived with the British, asking support to overthrow the Nawab in return for trade grants. The British forces, whose sole duty until then was guarding company property, were numerically inferior to the Bengali armed forces. At the Battle of Plassey on June 23, 1757, fought between the British under the command of Robert Clive and the Nawab, Mir Jafar's forces betrayed the Nawab and helped defeat him. Jafar was installed on the throne as a British subservient ruler. 
the battle transformed British perspective as they realized their strength and potential to conquer smaller Indian kingdoms and marked the beginning of the imperial or colonial era in the subcontinent. British policy in Asia during the 19th century was chiefly concerned with expanding and protecting its hold on India, viewed as its most important colony and the key to the rest of Asia. The East India Company drove the expansion of the British Empire in Asia. The company's army had first joined forces with the Royal Navy during the Seven Years' War, and the two continued to cooperate in arenas outside India, the eviction of Napoleon from Egypt, 1799, the capture of Java from the Netherlands, 1811, the acquisition of Singapore, 1819, and Malacca, 1824, and the defeat of Burma, 1826. From its base in India, the company had also been engaged in an increasingly profitable opium export trade to China since the 1730s. This trade, unlawful in China since it was outlawed by the Qing dynasty in 1729, helped reverse the trade imbalances resulting from the British imports of tea, which saw large outflows of silver from Britain to China. In 1839, the confiscation by the Chinese authorities at Canton of 20,000 chests of opium led Britain to attack China in the First Opium War, and the seizure by Britain of the island of Hong Kong, at that time a minor settlement. The British had direct or indirect control over all of present-day India before the middle of the 19th century. In 1857, a local rebellion by an army of sepoys escalated into the rebellion of 1857, which took six months to suppress with heavy loss of life on both sides. The trigger for the rebellion has been a subject of controversy. The resistance, although short-lived, was triggered by British East India Company attempts to expand its control of India. According to Olson, several reasons may have triggered the rebellion. For example, Olson concludes that the East India Company's attempt to annex and expand its direct control of India, by arbitrary laws such as doctrine of lapse, combined with employment discrimination against Indians, contributed to the 1857 rebellion. The East India Company officers lived like princes, the company finances were in shambles, and the company's effectiveness in India was examined by the British Crown after 1858. As a result, the East India Company lost its powers of government and British India formally came under direct British rule, with an appointed Governor-General of India. The East India Company was dissolved the following year in 1858. A few years later, Queen Victoria took the title of Empress of India. India suffered a series of serious crop failures in the late 19th century, leading to widespread famines in which at least 10 million people died. The East India Company had failed to implement any coordinated policy to deal with the famines during its period of rule. This changed during the Raj, in which commissions were set up after each famine to investigate the causes and implement new policies, which took until the early 1900s to have an effect. The slow but momentous reform movement developed gradually into the Indian independence movement. During the years of World War I, the hitherto bourgeois home rule movement was transformed into a popular mass movement by Mahatma Gandhi, a pacifist. Apart from Gandhi, other revolutionaries such as Shahid Bhagat Singh, Chandrasekhar Azad, Subhas Chandra Bose, and Pradyam Anand Pandyala were not against use of violence to oppose the British rule. The independence movement attained its objective with the independence of Pakistan and India on 14 and August 15, 1947 respectively. Conservative elements in England consider the independence of India to be the moment that the British Empire ceased to be a world power, following Curzon's dictum that, W. Heil we hold on to India, we are a first-rate power. If we lose India, we will decline to a third-rate power. French Following the Portuguese, English, and Dutch, the French also established trading bases in India. Their first establishment was in Pondicherry on the Coromandel coast in southeastern India in 1674. Subsequent French settlements were Chandernagore in Bengal, northeastern India in 1688, 
Yenam in Andhra Pradesh in 1723, Mahay in 1725, and Karakal in 1739. The French were constantly in conflict with the Dutch and later on mainly with the British in India. At the height of French power in the mid-18th century, the French occupied large areas of southern India and the area lying in today's northern Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Between 1744 and 1761, the British and the French repeatedly attacked and conquered each other's forts and towns in southeastern India and in Bengal in the northeast. After some initial French successes, the British decisively defeated the French in Bengal in the Battle of Plassey in 1757 and in the southeast in 1761 in the Battle of Wandiwash, after which the British East India Company was the supreme military and political power in southern India as well as in Bengal. In the following decades it gradually increased the size of the territories under its control. The enclaves of Pondicherry, Karakal, Yenam, Mahe, and Chandernagore were returned to France in 1816 and were integrated with the Republic of India in 1954. Denmark was one of the major colonial powers to set foot in India. It established trading outposts in Tranquibar, Tamil Nadu, 1620, Sarampuri, West Bengal, 1755, Calicut, Kerala, 1752, and the Nicobar Islands, 1750s. At one time, the main Danish and Swedish East Asia companies together imported more tea to Europe than the British did. Their outposts lost economic and strategic importance, and Tranquibar, the last Danish outpost, was sold to the British in 1845. Other External Powers the Spanish were briefly given territorial rights to India by Pope Alexander VI on September 25, 1493 by the Bull Dudum Sai Quidem before these rights were removed by the Treaty of Tordesillas less than one year later. The Japanese briefly occupied the Andaman and Nicobar Islands during World War II.